everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Dixon and I'm a naturalist with the East Bay Regional Park District. And filming me right now is Virginia Delgado, another naturalist. And we work at a place called Black Diamond Mines. And some of our best friends here are snakes. And this one here is one of our snake ambassadors. And in most years, she meets hundreds or even thousands of people. She goes out to schools, she meets kids and they come out to the park just specially to see her. So Sydney, you might not know this, is a Pacific gopher snake. And this is the kind of snake you might find when you're out on the trail, walking around. You might see one right in the trail or next to the trail on a bush. And you might wonder, is that snake dangerous or not? So today what I'm going to try to do is explain the difference between a gopher snake and a rattlesnake. A couple of things I would like you to look at when you're looking at Sydney, the gopher snake, our ambassador. I would like you to look at her head. See how she's sticking out her tongue? And can you see her eyes, her beautiful eyes? If you look at her head, you can see that it's really not much wider than her neck, right? And then I want to tell you another thing. Look at how shiny she is in the sun. And then when you look at her body, can you see that it's about even width the whole way along? It's kind of even the whole way, and it just gradually tapers onto her tail. And what's at the end of her tail? More blotches, no rattle, a nice sharp little tail. So, so those are some of the things that you can look for. I will say there are some ways that rattlesnakes and gopher snakes kind of look alike because they both have these blotches on their backs. So Sydney has that and our other snake, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, also has those blotches on her back, but she has some differences. So I want you uh, to introduce you to another one of our snake ambassadors here. And this one we call Angeline. And Angeline is a Northern Pacific rattlesnake. And that's the kind of rattlesnake that you'll see in any of the East Bay parks. They're especially in the parks that get hotter in the summer, like here at Black Diamond Mines. You might see rattlesnakes. And the two snakes you see most are actually gopher snakes and rattlesnakes. So I'm showing you the two snakes you're most likely to see when you're walking around in our parks in the springtime. Now, if you want to take a closer look at Angeline, Go ahead and zoom in real close. I want you to look at her head first. Can we get in close to see her head? Notice her head and neck. Her head is much, much bigger than her neck. See how her neck is small behind her head? And can you see that the back of her head is quite wide? Now look at her body. It's kind of really thin in the front part, but really thick near the middle. So that's different from the gopher snake too, right? Now if you look at the tip of her tail, you can see obviously there's a rattle on the end. And she has about nine rattles, I think. She's going to be three years old in about October, I believe. So we've had her since, uh, since we got her as a baby out here in the park. I want you to look at one other thing about her too is that her skin is dull and not shiny like Sydney's. See how it's kind of a dull pattern? Some of our rattlesnakes are a little more on the reddish side, some are more on the greenish side, and Angelina is kind of gray-green. And look near where the rattle is. Can you see how there are rings around the tail, sort of blackish, whitish rings? Well, the gopher snake has the same pattern all the way through, but the similar thing is that they both have blotches on the back. So when you do see one on the trail, you might not be able to tell immediately if it's a rattlesnake or a gopher snake. And one other thing is that the gopher snakes will sometimes, they want you to leave them alone so they'll try to act like a rattlesnake. So they may even rattle their tail and it might even make a noise if there's some dry leaves there. They'll raise up like a rattlesnake might if they want it to strike and they'll even flatten their head and their body to look more like a rattlesnake. So when you see Angeline, 
and you see Sydney, you think, oh, they're so different. How could I not be able to tell them apart? But when you see them on the trail, they might look almost the same. So I'm giving you an up close view uh, together with Virginia here. And we hope you can appreciate the differences and you ask us lots of questions because this is the kind of stuff we love talking about. And Angelina, as you can see, is a very sweet snake, but she's not one of the snakes that we handle.